Hello everyone. This video is to help you learn how to use the NIO AFM or Nano All-in-One Atomic Force Microscope. I should note that the NIO AFM is made by NanoSurf and it is also sold under the name of Trax by Nanoscience Instruments. I'm assuming that you know something about atomic force microscopy and its operation principles and that you're familiar with examples of AFM use. If you are not, please go watch Lessons 1 and 2 at youtube.com slash atomic force micro. Before we go much further, I'd like to tell you about what the NIO AFM does not do. It does not scan larger than 70 microns. It does not take th samples thicker than 3.5 millimeters. If the sample height variation is greater than 14 microns, we won't be able to track it. Only works in air and does not do lateral force measurements. What are we trying to do in these first two tutorials? We'd like you to learn how to qualify to use the NIO AFM at WPI and how to operate it in contact mode. That's the simplest mode. And if you want to learn more, you'll have to do it by yourself or enroll in one of the courses. We have two courses at WPI, Physics 561 for graduate students or Physics 2510 for undergraduate students. If you want to learn by yourself, there are lots of resources online and in various libraries. The ones that I have made are at youtube.com, Atomic Force Micro. Of course, there's also a user's manual, and that you'll get as soon as you start working in the lab. Here are the steps for basic qualification for constant force contact mode only. You will study these first two tutorials and be ready for a quiz. You'll log in to your WPI email account and email me, Professor Burnham, to request a practice session. Make sure you email me from your WPI account. That way I know you're a WPI student. You will take a written quiz at the beginning of your practice session. You are allowed to fail it only once, and then we give up on you. I'm sorry. But if you pass, the TA will spend the rest of the time helping you use the NIO AFM. And then the next time you come, you'll get a practical quiz. You'll show the TA that you know all the laboratory procedures and you know how to take a constant force contact mode image. And again, you may pass that practical quiz on a second chance if you don't pass the first time, but uh, after that we lose patience with you. Assuming you pass now both the written and practical quiz, you and your faculty advisor agree to the conditions of use, and then you will be granted access to the reservation system, and you'll be added to the mailing list to keep everybody informed on the status of the equipment. Alternatively, if you're enrolled in Physics 561 or Physics 2510, our courses on atomic force microscopy, They'll bring you up to a much higher level of AFM understanding and use. If you pass one of those courses, and if you and your faculty advisor agree to the conditions of use, then that's the alternative way of being added to the user's mailing list and reservation system. Now I'll give you an overview of the instrument itself, its sensing and detection system, and the software. Here it is. It sits on a granite vibration isolation table with vibration isolation feet. Electronics 
impressively are all just underneath this tiny unit. The scan head, the active part, is right here. The sample goes here. You can position the sample underneath the cantilever tip using these two screws. And this locking handle here holds everything steady in place during imaging. And you open it up to exchange either the sample or the probe. This part here is the scan shield and that prevents air currents from disturbing the measurement. Here's the back side. The parts that you'll be using are the power button and the locking handle. When you undo the locking handle, this is what you'll see. You'll see where the sample goes and you'll see the scanner and the scan head and this is the important part and I'll show you the function of the scan head in the next slide. Here's how the scan head works. The cantilever, this tiny little part right here, is attached to the cantilever probe chip, this part right here that you can pick up with tweezers. The motion of the cantilever is detected with a laser that sends light down to it. That ref light is reflected back, and depending on whether the cantilever is bent forwards or backwards, the position of that reflected light spot changes. That is picked up by the photo detector. It tells the electronics if the cantilever is at the set point, i.e. the deflection that we want or not. The cantilever probe chip sits on this alignment chip and is held in place by this cantilever holder spring and in order to change the probe chip you take a cantilever insertion tool and put it down in this hole that flips the spring up and you can take tweezers and move the probe in and out. Here are some views of the alignment chip you see these features poking up here. Well, they fit right into these alignment grooves here on the probe chip. And the cantilever itself is that tiny little thing right there. Here's a zoomed in view of a probe chip. Now, this is the opposite side than, than this one. So this this one will be the side that's facing up as you put it into the scan head. And here's a zoomed in view of the cantilever itself with the tip on it. The tip side will be up as you put it into the scan head. And for reference, this width here is about 25 to 50 microns is typical. Lengths on the order of 200 to 400 micro microns. Here's the user interface of the software. There are five main sections to it. The measurement pane is where you'll watch your data coming in, your images forming here and the cross-section of your images here, and the imaging parameters here. The document space is where you can call up data that have been saved and work with them, observe them, analyze them while you're co collecting other measurements. In the info pane, you'll be able to look at your images in the gallery, ask for help, view the videos, by means of tabs at the bottom of the info pane. This ribbon functions much like a ribbon of a word processing system. That's where most of the controls are. And finally, we have the status bar that tells you what's going on with the instrument.
Let's take a closer look at the Acquisition tab of the ribbon. As you're, you're preparing to take an image, you'll be using this part of it. As you're bringing the scan head down close to the sample, you'll be using this part. And this you'll be using during image acquisition itself. There'll be more details about exactly what all these things mean in the next video. Now, I must tell you that despite my desire that you really have fun with AFM and that you're excited about learning to use it, that if you fail to follow the laboratory procedures, if you do something really silly, I'm going to have to ban you from the lab such that others may continue to enjoy it. Now, I know that would make you sad, and it would make me sad too, but I will do it. So please be careful as you work in the lab. In summary, what have we done? I have told you about the assumptions I have about your background in AFM, told you about the limitations of the NIO and the tracks, the goals for this tutorial and the next one, the two routes for qualifying for independent use of the NIO AFM, given you an overview of the hardware and the software, and my dire warning about proper behavior in a laboratory. So, on to tutorial number two.